Hi, this is Renee Murphy, counselor at Shawnee Heights High School. I want to visit with you now about graduation requirements for Shawnee Heights High School students. Probably the first place to look for these graduation requirements would be on our high school website um, in our course handbook. So let's go there right now. Probably the easiest way to access that would be to go to usd450.net. That pulls up the district website. If you go over to the schools tab, drop down one and click on the Shawnee Heights High School tab, you will go to our high school website. If we scroll down and go to the counseling tab on the left hand side and click on it, it pulls up all of the school counselor information and that would include our enrollment information where our course handbook is located. So please click on 2015-2016 enrollment information and where there's a blue click here for the 2015-2016 course offerings, we'll go ahead and click that and it pulls up our course handbook. It's nice to have kind of a table of contents to the left and so we're going to go ahead and check on graduation requirement matrix and this is a nice graph kind of outlining the different types of curriculums that a student could take at Shawnee Heights. We have here at the top the name of each curriculum and the definition of it. So for example on the left hand side we have the Shawnee Heights High School curriculum which would qualify students for admission to a Kansas Community College, a technical school, and Washburn University. So if we go down this way that lets us know all of the requirements in English, in science, math, social studies, and so on and we'll scroll down here in just a second. The second one, second type of curriculum, is the Kansas Regents University's Qualified Admissions Curriculum. This makes students eligible for admission to a Kansas Regents University, like KU, K-State, Emporia State, those kinds of universities. On the far right column is the Kansas Scholars Curriculum. This would qualify students for admission to a Regents University and for state-sponsored scholarships, but funding is not guaranteed, which means that if they complete this level, it means that they may be eligible to apply for certain types of scholarships, but it doesn't mean that they automatically receive those scholarships. Let's go ahead and take each of these curriculums one by one and explain some of the requirements in each. For the Shawnee Heights High School curriculum, for English, there is required four credits of English. We need freshman English, sophomore English, junior English, and senior English. For science, we need three credits. We need one credit of biology, and it is required for every student to have integrated science A, and integrated science B or if they don't have science B they can have one semester of physics. For this particular curriculum they would also need one elective of science. So it's a biology, it's one elective and then half of science A and half credit of science B or one semester of physics. A credit, one credit, is equal to two semesters. A half credit is equal to one semester. For math, it is required for three credits of math. So that would be two semesters equal one credit, or another way to look at it is three years of math. As we scroll down, we see for social studies, they need one credit of U.S. history, usually taken the junior year, one half credit of U.S. government, usually taken the senior year, and then one and one half electives 
for a total of three credits. For the Shawnee Heights High School curriculum, there is no requirement for a foreign language. For physical education, it is required that there be one credit of PE. Either you can do a half credit of teen topics or do one full year of ROTC 1. For the activity part of the physical education requirement, they can either take a PE class, do four semesters of ROTC, or two semesters of marching band. For fine arts, there is only a requirement for one credit, and that are the requirements for the high school graduation curriculum. The second level that we have is the Regents University's curriculum. Again, this qualifies students for admission to Kansas Regents Universities. For English, there needs to be four credits of English. One half of that credit can be college public speaking. For science, there needs to be three credits of science. It's a little bit different um, because there would need to be one credit of biology, one credit of chemistry or physics, and one elective. And because we're, we are requiring all of our students to have half integrated science A and B, that would probably need to be the one elective. For math, the requirement is three credits of math and a math ACT score of 22. If a student does not have at least a math score of 22, then they are required to take four credits of math. A semester of college algebra will count as one credit. For social studies, they are required to have three credits, one credit of U.S. history, one half of U.S. government, and then one half of world history or world geography and one elective. For foreign language, there is no requirement for Regents Universities to have a foreign language. For physical education, <clears throat> it is the same as the um, standard high school curriculum. For fine arts, it is one credit, the same as the high school curriculum. For elective credits, um, for the high school curriculum, there needs to be 9.5. For the regents, it's also 9.5 with three credits from the following, and then it lists um, several different types of study. For the scholars curriculum, and again, this qualifies students for admission to a Kansas Regents University <clears throat> and makes a student eligible for state-sponsored scholarships. For English, there needs to be four credits, same as qualified admissions curriculum. There needs to be three credits of science, so one biology, one chemistry, one physics, and we also require a half integrated science A along with the other science courses. There needs to be four credits of math um, and algebra taken in the eighth grade is accepted in the scholars. Algebra taken in the eighth grade is not accepted in the regents and Algebra taken in the eighth grade is accepted in the high school curriculum. For social studies, it's required that a student takes U.S. history, U.S. government, world history or world geography, and an elective. For the scholars section, there is a requirement for a foreign language. There needs to be two credits of foreign language taken. It has to be the same language. The PE requirements is the same as the high school and regents. The fine arts is the same. And for elective credits, 
looks like we need to have 6.5 credits. For a total of 24.5 credits are needed to graduate. And that's a review of the graduation requirements for Shawnee Heights High School. If you have any questions regarding this, please contact the counselor or your counselor at the Shawnee Heights Counseling Department. Thank you.